why I hate the movie Men in Tights. Robin Hood Men in Tights. Robin, Robin Hood, Hood Men in Tights. Okay. Yes. The Mel Brooks movie you're talking about with Carrie yes. Howells in it. I have Richard never Lewis. seen it and I will never see it. Here's the thing. I am okay. a huge Michael Jackson fan. Yes. I have loved him forever. Okay. I love the whole Jackson family. I love the whole thing. The first accuser, Jordy Chandler, wrote the screenplay with his father, Evan Chandler, wrote the screenplay for Robin Hood Men in Tights. Oh. And this is why I will never watch the movie. Okay. And I okay. will never, ever I've never ever suggest anybody watch it. And if you're a Michael Jackson <laughs> fan and you have watched it, shame on you. Evan didn't like the fact that Michael was like this father figure in his son's life. Okay. And he felt like he was being replaced. Now, a little backstory on who Evan Chandler is. He was the dentist to the stars. Okay. One of the things that he did, and Carrie Fisher wrote this in her autobiography, people who wanted drugs from him. He would write them prescriptions like Carrie Fisher. We all know that she was an addict. She's very mm -hmm. open about being a drug addict. And she would get drugs from him. He was very into like, you know, hobnobbing with celebrities. He really liked that. He liked the attention. He liked that he could give them something. They would, you know, basically pay him money. And then mm. he would come over to their house. He would give them drugs. He would do whatever, you know, his uh, license plate said like sleep MD on it. Cause he would give people like, yeah. He was I think there's a lot bipolar. more of that going he on. He was probably. also bipolar, which a lot of people don't know. He was upset that Michael was like ba basically kind of inserting him into the family and he yeah. didn't like how close they were. So Evan filed for a modification in the custody with his ex-wife. He ends up going and staying with his dad. <laughs> David Schwartz, that's the stepfather to Jordy. He had been hearing all the stuff that Evan Chandler has been saying about, you know, his son spending too much time and he's been going on these rants about it. So he secretly starts recording conversations with them. Now, okay. before there's any accusations of anything happening with Michael or anything, <clears throat> he's never said anything about this. He hasn't heard anything from Jordy. Jordy's never made any accusations or anything. He starts saying how he basically has a plan with his lawyers to go and extort money from Michael. They're going to get him. This guy is a dentist. Like I said, he has access to drugs. His dad gives him sodium amytal, which is known as a truth serum. Okay. But this particular type of truth, there's different kinds of what is called truth serum. There's different kinds of truth serum. This particular one creates false memories. Just to use it on soldiers, it's very addictive. It can kill you very Jeez. easily. And the fact that he gives it to his son is insane. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes used to treat insomnia. Now, basically all... he gives this to him just to ask him a question about Michael. He asked his son, has Michael ever touched you? And he says, yes. So Evan then has a meeting with Michael. He presents Michael and his attorneys with a letter from a psychiatrist saying that Jordy and Michael had an inappropriate relationship. Okay. The thing is, this psychiatrist has never met Jordy, never had an interview with him, never even met him. This Dr. Abrams um, was spoken to over the phone by Evan Chandler's attorney. And then okay. he writes a letter saying they had an appropriate relationship hmm. without ever meeting the boy or having any one conversation with. The next day, Evan Chandler demands $20 million. There was a, a counter offer. They did kind of a counter offer back and forth where movie script deals were in play. Mm -hmm. Eventually it all falls through and nothing happens. Jordy's mother gets wind of what's you know happening and everything. And she yeah. thinks Evan's making it up and she files to get custody back of Jordy. Mm -hmm. So Evan freaks out and he thinks he's going to lose his payday. Last resort. He's going to take Jordy to that psychiatrist, Dr. Abrams, who wrote the fake letter. And uh, when he gets there. They have like a conversation. It's just him and Jordy. So we just have to go off what the, you know, psychiatrist says. And he claims Jordy confesses that Michael had, you know, inappropriateness with him and he, him as a psychiatrist. If a child says that he has to report it to the police. Oh now, yeah, absolutely. After he's already been under mind altering drugs that causes false memories. Those like the truth serum that I was talking about mm -hmm. is very influential. You, that's why you can't use it. And it can't be trusted. Jordy couldn't even correctly identify what Michael's penis looked like. Yeah. Uh, prosecutors and the police department spent $2 million 
trying to find evidence. They interviewed 200 witnesses, including 30 kids, and nobody could uh, say Jordy's story was correct. Nobody could confirm it. There was no charges brought because of that. And Lisa Marie, who he's friends with at the time, not married to, friends with, yeah. she helped convince Michael to just pay the settlement. Just pay yeah. it out and move on with your life. He said, it's not worth losing sleep over, you know, just pay it out. So he takes her advice along with his attorney's advice. And they're just thinking, let's just make this go away. So he paid $22 million. No criminal charges were pressed. Uh, like I said, due to the lack of evidence, mm-hmm. Jordy gets most of the money in a trust. And I think like his dad only got something like a million dollars or something, something like that. Like most yeah. of the money went to Jordy. Little th- other thing about Evan Chandler is he committed suicide in 2009, just a few months after Michael died, which was very interesting. And That's Jordy, strange. yeah, Jordy Chandler and uh, his dad had a falling out sometime after, and he ended up changing his identity Mm-hmm. And uh, basically kind of going into hiding because there was so much like hate to him towards him, you know, oh, I believe so it. nobody really knows where he is or what he's doing. Last time anyone knew he was in New York 